Hey, Brian, happy holidays. How important was the Soto move to the future of this franchise in your mind? Well, as you know, the future is always now. Um, so 24 is our focus and trying to uh, become that last team standing once again, um, as we've done in years gone by, uh, that's the focus. So, you know, that's really, that's what the Yankees are all about is the, is obviously what's, what's the, how's the best to position us for 24 and how's how best generally to position us for our very next season. Thank you. Mary Phillips, please unmute. Hey, Brian, I'm just curious if, uh, there's been any indication that Soto and Scott Boris would be willing to talk about an extension before he hits free agency. I know that's typically not what Boris clients do, but I haven't had any conversations uh, regarding that. So we understand that uh, he's, he's a free agent at the end of this uh, term. Um, and, uh, but, you know, we understand that it's a possible short-term situation and I know he's just going to make our team significantly better. Um, but it's not going to be just him. We got to continue working at what what else we can add to this roster. And then it also seemed like, you know, just through reports yesterday that there seemed to be some delays with medicals or other holdups in the deal. Was there anything that the Padres took issue with or raised red flags about yesterday? No, I just think uh, teams need to be thorough. Uh, they had more players going back their way. And uh, at the same time, I think uh, AJ's a very busy man he's got a lot of uh, balls in the air in one case but he was also uh, at the same time you know um presenting a scout of the year award so like it, it, there's when you have your doctors your trainers and their availability and then you have to match up with your availability it just try to try, tries it kind of delays the the process a little bit so um so no yeah, everything was all good it's just everybody i think being thorough it's a big like anything else like you you want to be thorough on small deals but uh you need to be even more thorough on the bigger deals too to make sure you know everybody knows what they're getting gotcha thanks brendan cuddy go ahead cash thanks for taking the time um two questions first how intentionally will you guys be uh trying to you know recruit one and then and, and hope that he stays with you guys for a long a long term well, I, you know, we ultimately we want to uh, the, the culture we have with the Yankees that we project constantly is our intent to, to win. You know, you know, we're here, we're in it to win it. Um, you know, so that's messaging that's constantly being reinforced. And we also want to, you know, protect and serve our players, put them in the best position to succeed, provide every uh, every opportunity or, or interest that they would have at their disposal so they can be successful. Um, and you know, and then that in itself and playing in front of you know one of the greatest fan bases in the world you know all those things are selling points on their own um and then past that you know uh you know we're not going to trick anybody we're not going to be something we're not we're you know we've got good people here uh you know whether it's manager coaches uh you know his new teammates uh as well as you know it, our fans and uh and the, the tri-state area there's a lot to offer um so i think that's a recruiting beacon for anybody. Uh, I know the question specifically about Juan Soto, but uh, I think they're, you know, we certainly want to try to always, to, you know, under the Steinbrenner leadership to, to make this, you know, the mecca of baseball um, and also to make this, uh, you know, an amazing and enjoy enjoyable experience for, for players and their families alike. So um, if we take care of stuff like that, that recruiting effort, you know, becomes somewhat automatic. Uh, but hey, it's, there's a lot of, there's 29 other teams with, with uh, tremendous opportunities and cities out there and people in their own right and, and operations that they run. So that's why, uh, you know, it's always a competition. And, and to whatever extent you're able to, could you give us the blow by blow on how this came together? It's, it's, you know, pretty historic type trade. I mean, uh, I, I had a lot of conversations at the trade deadline actually with AJ Preller um, on Soto and, and we're not talking about, Verdugo with this, but I actually had trade deadline conversations with Boston on Verdugo, and and uh, and so in both place, players' cases, whether it's going back to Washington or or or, uh, or San Diego or Boston, with 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 all these players involved, we've had these efforts weren't the first attempts to to acquire these players, um, and uh, but yeah, right out of the gate, uh, you know, it started. Uh, Omar Manaya, who used to work with AJ Preller and I met with AJ out in uh, Scottsdale. Um, the 
make sure that AJ knew how serious we were. You know, we were very vocal in public that we we're looking for not just one left-handed bat, outfield bat, but two, with, especially with the Jason Dominguez injury. And um, and so, therefore, we're trying to find that in a marketplace that was limited. And uh, so we knew it would be a challenge regardless. But, you know, we attacked this winter like every other winter or trade deadline in season. Um you know, we you know, put our best foot forward to see if we can pull down something that's of interest to us. And so we've had a lot of conversations, um, you know, and I think both teams in the end got, a, you know, exactly what they were, would be looking for. It, it hurt a lot on our end to give up some real, you know, pieces, but you have to give to get, as you all know. And, and uh, so we, you know, we certainly imported one of the best uh, hitters that the game has today. And also, uh, you know, don't sleep on Grisham. He's a, you, you know, he's a nice, you know, quality uh, uh, we believe championship caliber piece as well uh, that adds to our mix and gives our, our manager Aaron Boone a lot more choices than he had before this move. Thank you. Next to Eric Boland. Brian, you kind of uh, stated a little bit getting one of the, the best hitters in the game, but uh, just, and it sounds, it's an obvious answer, but it sounds better coming out of your mouth. How much better does Soto make your offense? Significantly better, obviously, uh, no doubt about it. You know, it's, you know, in a sc scouting, just alone, you know, how many teams can run out, you know, on a, a scouting scale, a pro scouting scale of 20 to 80, how many teams are running out two eights in their outfield, you know, uh, you know, in a judge of Soto. Uh, you know, I know that we saw that, you know, uh, iteration put together a little bit recently in the last few years in Anaheim with Trout and, and Otani. And, but it's, it's hard to run out. A multiple eights in any you know uh, category, uh, uh, you know whether it's outfield, infield, or even on your 25, 26 man roster. Um, so it significantly upgrades us without a doubt. And and the great thing about the the crazy eights is that uh, one's right handed, one's left handed, and uh, and so that that creates you know uh, a tougher lineup to navigate you know for the opposing pitchers. But but it's a team sport. We got to obviously have uh, a you know, a lot of other people pulling on the rope at the same time in, in the right direction. So we, we still have more work to do and, and we know that, but we are really excited by what those, you know, what this acquisition, you know, can do for both balance and impact. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly uh, excited by the opportunity to, to bring him here. You know, we think, uh, you know, it's again, and it's another manifestation uh, of, of the Steinbrenner, um, you know, legacy. Uh, I think George Steinbrenner uh, always felt that, you know, the best players in the world should play here for the New York Yankees. And I think that was always what he tried to accomplish um, and had a lot of success along the way, not always being able to pull them off, but constantly trying to do that. And, I, and obviously Hal Steinbrenner and, and Jenny and Jessica uh, have continued those efforts. And, and so, you know, Juan Soto is the latest uh, example of that, of, of their efforts to try to bring the greatest uh, most talented baseball players the world can provide uh, to play and call home uh, here in the Bronx, New York, uh, for our fan base. And so uh, we're excited by, you know, the opportunities, you know, uh, this provides for us as we move into the 24 season. And, and uh, you know, we're hopeful, hopeful that, that uh, his impact, along with his teammates, can, can provide some great baseball that plays deep into October for, for our fans. And then, Brian, who is your everyday center fielder for at least the first couple of months of the season or, or whenever uh, Dominguez comes back? Well, we'll see how the, the season plays out. But if, a, if if today was opening day, you know, Judge would be out in center field, um, you know, so uh, by the current alignment that we have. Uh, and he's exceptional at that. Uh, and so, yeah, we had a lot of conversations with that scenario. But um, I think... You know, we're better protected, you know, uh, in a lot of different ways, whether you're facing a right-hander one day versus a left-hander another versus the, the grind of a season that plays out or injuries that, that obviously, unfortunately, occur along the way. I think that we have a lot more choices today to uh, to navigate your uh, lineup decisions for the manager and the coaches downstairs than, than, than we would if we hadn't pulled off these more, more recent acquisitions of Verdugo, Grisham, and, and Soto. Is Jack Curry. Brian, when you make a deal of this magnitude, I'm, I'm sure there are some highs and lows across the last 72 or even more hours. What was the toughest part of making this Soto trade come to fruition? 
obviously getting to a yes, getting something that we could live with versus at the same time, something they could live with, you know, uh, so first, you know, uh, AJ is an amazing negotiator. Um, you know, uh, he's one of the, the game's best trade uh, you know, architects, um, as we've seen by the body of his work over the course of time. And, and uh, so I know that he's forced to reconfigure his team uh, in a championship caliber mode. And uh, so, you know, he certainly, um, you know, has now put himself in a better position while he reconfigures to, to do a lot of different other things to, to make sure his team is a good, good spot entering the 24 season. Uh, but the conversations were, you know, were many, uh, there's a lot of twists and turns in it. Um, you know, there's so much involvement, uh, you know, as you know, when you pull deals off like this from top to bottom, honestly, ownership every step of the way being willing to, to, to allow you to, to pull in, you know, with risk, pull in a contract like this on a one-year basis. You know, it's a lot of money uh, that he, he has on a one-year basis coming in arbitration, plus give up talent. Uh, but it fills a need. Uh, it's, you know, we've been trying to fill needs, uh, you know, on so I feel like the way we've gone about our operations is no different. We, we're always trying to tackle areas of need, but whether they're able to be accessible it, or, you know, uh, or line up with matches, that's the more difficult situation. And, and there clearly was a match to be made here uh, if we were willing to, you know, go all in. And thankfully, you know, the Steinbrenner DNA uh, has always been there about being willing to go all in. And, and so uh, thankfully in this particular conversation, we were able to match up in the more recent conversation also with Boston, we were able to match up um, even though there were so many conversations prior that we've had with, with Boston the last two years on Verdugo. And it, that wasn't the case, but we were able to both find something we could live with this time around. And, and uh, we didn't blink there. And, and, uh, and I think we're a better team for it right now. And I know he's only been a Yankee for a day. And I know you said your goal is to make, the Bronx, the Mecca of baseball. I also know Scott Boris's history, but how invested do you anticipate being this season to keep Soto beyond 2024? Right now we're focused on the here and now. Uh, I know there's going to be obviously those type of conversations, you know, for any player, whether you're a young player on the roster looking for, you know, a long-term extension or, or, or a player that's on an expiring contract for Dugo's on an expiring contract. Obviously Soto's on an expiring contract. You got Garrett Coles. Uh, I think i got, got a situation in his contract towards the end where, uh, you know, you, it, I think there's an opt out where you could put an extra year on. There's so many of these variables are in play and, and uh, that, you know, clearly we're, it's always fluid and you're always taking everything under advisement, staying connected with, uh, with ownership and, but we're just very proud of the fact that we can um, call him a Yankee at this time and and uh, with the full intentions of, again, taking a shot at his title. And uh, that navigating the American League East and, and the American League that obviously hosts the world defending world champs and the Texas Rangers, you know, um, you know, it's it's a challenge, no doubt about it, but we want to be up for that challenge. So obviously importing great players to add to the ones you already have is, you know, certainly going to be helping in that process. There's a, a bunch of hands up just um, for all those with the hands up. I'm gravitating towards those media members who cover us on a regular basis. So I'm not purposely overlooking you. Just know that the limited time that we have with cash, I am going to focus on, on the media contingent that covers us regularly. Uh, Chris Kirshner, please unmute. Hey, Cash, um, given the amount of pitching depth that you've lost in the past few days, do you now look at that? as your biggest need moving forward this off season? Yes. And then uh, have you been given any assurances by how that payroll can be higher than last season if need be? I wouldn't comment on payroll, um, you know, but, uh, you know, other than to re restate that uh, the Steinmeier family is constantly committed and pouring back into this franchise uh, with the intent and effort to have a world championship uh, banner flying again here in the Bronx. Um, that's always there. So, uh, but pitching is definitely uh, an area of focus without a doubt. It was before these deals, but clearly, you know, your point being since we lost, we offboarded pitching to, to make these deals. Um, onboarding pitching is going to be important, no doubt about it. Ron Blum, please unmute and thank you for having video. Even though I don't have video today, I'm being punished. <laughs> Cash. 
given the righty lefty splits of Verdugo and Grisham, do you see their time in the batting order, if not positionally, as some sort of platoon? Uh, you know, I my initial thought on Verdugo is Verdugo is no, and and uh, and I. And in Grisham's case, you know, obviously, I, I think he's going to be a weapon to be used uh, as needed. And um, but ultimately, Aaron Boone's going to make those calls. Um, you know, so I think, uh, you know, I think there's just power in numbers, and we have, you know, we've elevated our outfield class significantly by these moves. And um, and so Boone's going to have a lot of good decisions to make, and and uh, and that's a good thing. So, um, yeah. I, you know, I would have to defer mostly to Aaron on that regardless. And also, as you went through the trade talks, was it important from your side to keep Volpe and Dominguez out of any possible trades? Yes. Yeah, we value them a great deal, and understandably so, and, and I think the industry recognizes that. But, but it didn't stop them from asking regardless. Um, yeah, that's all part of the process, too. Thank you. Caldera, looks like you've moved to Nashville. Go ahead and unmute, Pete. Right, I'm here for the long term. Uh, Brian, just following up on, on Chris's question, uh, would you say you're in the market for more than one starter right now? We're in the market for pitching, you know, see if we can reinforce it. We like the pitching we have, um, but, you know, we also recognize that, uh, um, the, you know, if we can add to it, you know, it's important to do. And, um, but whether, you know, rotation, bullpen, combo, all of the above, um, from an insurance standpoint or or something established that you can plug and play with um you know we're we're going to continue conversations in that arena and we did we had, we've been having those regardless of these deals uh and those will continue thank you so next to dave lennon hey cash <clears throat> you mentioned that you had been kind of on soto to, to varying degrees since last year's deadline um was there a point where you guys were kind of like he fits everything that we need and this has to happen was it after the meetings you had in october in tampa when you talked to preller and scottsdale was there kind of that moment where you guys just had to decide that it was that you had to have soto no it was never that it's it's more like can you get can you get to a point where you have the opportunity to get soto um, we had a lot of conversations at the deadline and they chose not to move them, but they shared a lot of information at that time with us about players of interest um, that was a precursor to building what eventually has taken place now. Uh, so even though we were unable to acquire Soto at the deadline, um, you know, the, the healthy dialogue that we were having with AJ Preller, um, you know, gave us a roadmap to kind of pick up where we left off um you know starting in scottsdale so i think and speaking for any team you know, if you if you know everybody would want a Juan soto um it's just can you actually put yourself in a position to like wow this is actually something that can happen and uh it was clear by the momentum of these conversations there was we had we had a good sit down in scottsdale um and uh you know <laughs> Then I think things got interrupted, and understandably so. I think uh, you know, uh, you know, the Yankees' condolences to the the, the death of Peter Seidler. Uh, so the uh, uh, the amazing owner of the San Diego Padres, obviously, uh, with his passing, um, you know, certainly you know was 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 a tragic event. And then the, the manager interviews that uh, the Padres are going through when they left lost uh, Bob Melvin. I think that all those combinations of things kind of put everything understandably on hold and then um maybe a week before these meetings started it started to pick back up and uh and what the definition is of what plot of or what course they're going to plot and what their needs were going to be after things settled down uh and uh but again i think it was a springboard from conversations we had all summer because they weren't sure if they were going to stay in it and try to finish off and and squeak into the playoffs uh or do they cut cut their losses and and, uh, and, and uh, live to fight another day. We were facing the same scenario we were trying to add. Um, you know, so, you know, when you're in those no man lands, it becomes difficult. Uh, and so they ultimately wound up holding on to Soto and, and uh, determining whether they're going to move in the winter or not. And now they have. Great. Thanks, Cash. Max Goodman. 
Hey, Brian, uh, talking about the players that you traded away between the Soto and Verdugo trades and the existing depth that you still have, what does all of this say about the Yankees pitching department? I think uh, our pitching department, our player development department, I know, uh, I think they do a great job. Uh, I think uh, we have really good people. We have, uh, you know, scouting directors with their scouts on the amateur side and international and domestic doing an amazing job of onboarding talent. And then, um, and then the player, player development system that Kevin Reese runs uh, with his various coaching staffs, I think, yeah, they do an exceptional job. And they're in the, the most important key to all of that is, is making sure that everybody's in alignment because, you know, uh, you know, the connectivity between amateur scouting and, and development, uh, knowing what can be developed, what can be enhanced, what can be improved upon versus knowing to stay away from what can't. And I think those are all, you know, uh, areas that we have significantly improved on in the last, you know, maybe six years. Um, and so, you know, situations like this, and then unfortunately the rule of five where we got slammed are just more, you know, reinforcements or examples of we got people doing good work uh, in a lot of categories for us. And uh, it allows us to, at times, line up. And we're always trying to line up, but trying to line up is difficult regardless whether you have a lot of players or not. Um, but it's certainly easier to do if you have a lot of players to do it with. Thank you. We're going to take a couple more that'll get us to about a half hour with Cash. Uh, Jake Mintz, please unmute. Hi, Cash. Thanks for the time. Uh, I'm just curious is there any concern about Aaron Judge in center field, given that he's coming off a significant lower body injury? Um, I think we think he's fine. We think he's resolved. We think that that issue's behind him. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and obviously, if it wasn't, he wouldn't have been playing the, uh, the way he was in the second half, even when we started to to fade. Um, so uh, we think that's a resolved issue. Um, and now obviously with the winner on top of uh, finishing strong, um, you know, of rest, uh, that it's not an issue. So I know Booney's already talked to Judgey prior to this. I know he's excited. Uh, and uh, hey, that, that might mean center fields in play for you. And we'll see how the rest of the winter plays out. A lot, a lot of things could always happen. But as of right now, I think if opening day was hit today, uh, uh, you know, he would certainly be a uh, 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 running out there uh, in center, which I know he loves. You know, I think if you put true serum in him, that's what he'd want to do regardless. Um, but uh, but he can, you know, he's exceptional in all that ad, uh, categories in that area. So, um, but we'll see. You know, but I don't. I, I'm not currently worried about him uh, health wise. Um, but that's the the opportunity it provides when you have a lot of depth. That if we do have injuries that hit our roster, you know, depending on who it is, no matter who it is, that uh, we're better positioned now than we were maybe 48 hours ago. Take a last one from Gary, uh, just for planning purposes, everybody. We don't, there. I don't have any further Zooms this week scheduled or planned. Obviously, we'll keep you abreast of uh, any availabilities that uh, might take place next week, but I, I don't know uh, where we stand for next week as of right now. Gary, go ahead. Uh, cash two for you actually first one might be a little obvious but after adding three outfielders you consider your outfield set at this point i think so um again i'm open-minded constantly willing to uh if somebody has an idea that somehow improves our roster that currently is as it currently is constituted uh and they want to knock on the door regarding something i already have that i'm extremely comfortable with uh we're willing to listen but but yeah, I'm not trying to to do anything in that area at this stage. I feel like it's it's kind of set up. 